I have here the Nikon D7100 and I want to take just a few moments and tour the external features of this camera and touch briefly on the internals and share my thoughts after using this for about 24 hours, which is a fairly brief amount of time. I'll give you a little bit of a spoiler as I sometimes do in my videos. My review of this is probably going to be very positive. I have found very little to dislike in this camera so far. This is a really nice uh, feels wonderful in the hand. It's a nice size and weight. It's a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter than the D7000. It's got a full magnesium construction and a pretty serious weather sealing. Not the complete that we see on the full pro bodies, but for a body only that's coming in around $1,100, $1,200 US, uh, a very nice amount of sealing and more than we're seeing from other manufacturers except maybe Pentax. Let's tour some of these outside buttons. So we're looking at the front of the camera right here um, and working our way down from the top we have our uh, flash exposure compensation right there and flash pop up if you're in auto mode um, or in another mode um, where the flash isn't going to pop up. Pressing that of course will pop it up. The next button down right here is the bracket button and that is a very nice feature for you HDR shooters. If you hold that down and rotate the command dial, you have a choice of doing two, three, or five frames of varying exposures, and it makes it very easy, very quick to set those um, however you want. Lens release down below that, and then down at the very bottom we have our AF, not on the lens, but on the camera body itself, we have our AF or manual focus selector, and we also have, that is also a switch and a button, and holding the button in will allow you to rotate again the command dial. Many of these buttons, when you hold them in and rotate the command dial, you get sub options. Uh, will allow you to rotate through your different types of focus settings like continuous or single shot. The top dial, we've got a new little locking mechanism on the top dial. You have to hold that down to rotate the dial and we have all of our standards. It is a 360 dial. It will go all the way around. U1 and U2, if you didn't have the D7000, those are custom settings. You can assign a variety of settings to those dials and anytime you return um, uh, on the mode dial to U1 or U2, you will get those settings for you. Underneath of the mode dial, let's turn it a little bit, is our shooting mode. We have our single shot, our continuous low, continuous high, quiet, and it is quite quiet, much quieter than the D5200 I found. We have our time and we have our mirror lockup. Again, deep in the menu, very customizable options for several of those, including the continuous low you can set from anywhere from one frame a second all the way up to six frames a second. The continuous high, you get about six frames per second in your normal mode. Then if you, the Nikon D7100 offers that crop mode 1.3. That's on top of the camera already cropping because it has a cropped sensor. Uh, so you're almost at 2x uh, crop, and at that mode you can get a little bit faster of a burst rate. Uh, and so that's very nice for sports shooters, wildlife photographers. Uh, when you're in that crop mode, your focus points are also filling the frame. So basically you have 100% coverage filling the frame. Let's talk about the back of the camera now. We have a lot of multi-purpose buttons back here. Uh, we of course have the delete and the playback. We'll show you your last taken image. Menu brings up your menu system. This menu system looks very similar to the D5200, except for there are a lot of very, what I call, professional features, like the micro adjust for your autofocus with different lenses. Um, and some of the annoyances, like a little annoyance of mine of the D5200 was once you started an intervalometer, there was no way to stop it, save turning the camera off or rotating the mode dial. Now, with this camera, uh, you can pause it, and you have options all within that menu system while that intervalometer is running. That's minor and a little bit quirky, uh, but for people who like to shoot time lapses, that's quite nice. Then moving our way down, we have our help menu, and it's also our rate or protect button for uh, protect images. We have our quality setting. If you hold this down and rotate the command dial, you can uh, navigate through the top there and I'm not sure how well that's coming through on the other camera but you can see whether or not you can see you can set raw JPEG raw plus JPEG 
all of those. Same down here, we got our magnification that can be used in live view or it can be used to zoom in on images after you've taken them. Or if you're shooting, you can hold it down and you can rotate through the quality level of the image, whether or not you want fine or basic JPEG images. Next below that is ISO. That allows you to rotate through ISO. And in the menu system, you can go ahead and set an auto ISO and have some fairly granular control over that setting as well. And then at the bottom of the screen is the I button, which brings up the info. And this is very similar to the D5200 menu, except I like that it's got you this little kind of comic strip pop-up that gives you a full explanation of what these are. And this is kind of a quick access to some more buttons um, or settings on buttons and some features in the camera. Over on the right hand side we have the AE. This is your exposure lock or it can be used for your autofocus lock or it can be used as your back button focusing. And it's really nice, it's big and it's easy to push. I've already set it for my back button focusing and I love that. We have the command dial, the main command dial here, and on the front, we'll look in a second, is the sub command dial. Kind of the multi-selector here navigates through a lot of your menu items. It can also be used when it is pointed at that with a little switch here, can be used to navigate through your um, focus point. And right now I have auto, focus on auto. Let's change that. I'm going to hold down that little button and rotate the sub command dial for my individual points and now you can see that I can move those points wherever I would like to on the back there using that control pad. Below that we have our live view setting for camera or for video and it's a switch and a push and suddenly you are live view and then with that running you can press the I button and cycle through some kind of information and get your quick access to some settings since I just switched it into video. I can switch back here and you have quick access to many of those same settings that were across the bottom a second ago. They're all there now. And I'll press I again to cancel and pressing info will navigate through various overlays on the screen as well. I think that's it for the back of the camera. Dual card slots, two SD cards can be in there. You have the option of writing different files to each or the same as a backup, video to one, JPEG to another, a lot of options there as well. On top of the camera, we of course have the on off switch, the shutter button, your auto exposure, your record button. You can also set the shutter button to start recording and your metering mode. Notice there's a little red format next to that and there's a red format on the back next to the delete button. If you hold both of those down at the same time, you can reformat a card um, when you're in the info mode. Hidden deep in here is a preview button. It's a depth of field preview button that can be assigned to other things. And then at the bottom, very hidden, is this function button. Um, it's hidden, but it's right next to where your fingers are laying when you hold this grip and so it's quite easy to access. By default that is set to switch you between your, your DX mode and your additional crop mode um, but you can assign other things to that button. So as I said I've been um, holding this now and shooting with it for about 24 hours. Low light performance seems absolutely stunning from my crop sensor body really really happy with it. I will be back with more thoughts and some sample images uh, very soon and in the meantime if you have any questions at all don't hesitate just leave them down below or come on over to the Facebook page and send me a message. Thanks so much for watching and if you haven't please subscribe. Thank you.